Hello, I'm David Cater with Laptop Battery One. Today we will demonstrate how to adjust power settings on your laptop to conserve battery life. Let's tap on the Windows Start icon and select Control Panel. Work our way over here to Power Options and click it. Let's look at the basics. Choose what the power button does. In here we can change a few settings. Sleep, hibernate, or shut down. A power button should shut down the computer. You may prefer another option. If you have ever wondered just what the difference between sleep and hibernate is, well, sleep saves a snapshot of your computer, everything that you're working on, and places that into RAM. When the computer shuts down, a small amount of power is used to maintain that RAM. This form of stasis can last for days or even longer, depending on your battery life. When the power button is pressed again, the system boots up quickly and back to where you last were when the system went to sleep. Hibernate takes a snapshot and this time it sends all that information to the hard drive. This way the computer can be shut down indefinitely. We're talking years if you like and when the system powers back up the system reads the hard drive and restores back the original state. If you select when I close the lid you can select from the same options. I prefer it to do nothing just in case my computer is downloading a file or processing some sort of program. Lastly we have password protection on wake up. If you work in a sensitive area and you don't want others to look at your computer while you're away, simply add extra protection by requiring a password before you get back to work. Let's select Change Power Settings. On battery, you can select that if you don't touch your system for a select amount of time, it will dim the display, and that will help save power. I prefer never, and just manually dim the display to a comfortable level. Turn off your display. Again, if you walk away from your computer, you can save a fair amount of power just by adjusting this feature. I usually leave it on never and just close the lid. Seems a bit safer, so if I'm getting a cup of coffee or tea, when I return there are no accidents going into my keyboard. Putting your computer to sleep option comes in handy if you walk away from your system and you forget to shut it down. That way it saves your work for you. Now let's enter the advanced settings. You'll notice that some of these settings are a rehash from the other pages. But now it's all in one location. Again, you can require a password on wake up. Here's a good one, hard disk. You can save a bit of power by having your hard drive turn off if you're not using it. This is fine for spreadsheets and word processing, not so good for graphic arts and video editing. Slideshow, this is a background setting that goes to the screensaver feature. Wireless adapter settings, power saving mode. On battery, a medium setting reduces the output of the transmitter and therefore limits your range. However, at just about any coffee shop or home, medium is more than adequate. Of course, when you're plugged in, why not just leave it to maximum? This helps maintain a strong signal lock and therefore maximum throughput for data transfers. Again, you can change your sleep settings. Hybrid Sleep offers a little extra protection. It stores your information to RAM and to the hard drive as well. So it will sleep, and if the battery dies, the information is still on the hard drive. Hibernate After allows your work to be saved again, and if you happen to forget it, to shut down your system. I personally do not like Hibernate, so let's set that to Never. So I'll type in zero. Oops. There is no need to hit Apply until after all the settings are set to your desires. So when we go back, it should say Never. And it does. Wake up timers. They're on, but I don't use them. That's kind of like your coffee maker in the morning. USB settings, selective suspend setting. You can allow them to shut down, but that can cause issues with external devices. So I leave them disabled. It's up to you. Intel graphics, you can save even more power by reducing the speed of your video. This helps for word processing, not so much for video editing or photo editing. So I leave it at maximum. Power buttons and lid. Again, the same settings as before. Nothing new there. Power management. This is a built-in CPU throttling to help save power. As you can see right now, this screen is being recorded and the CPU is trying to save power by adjusting the core frequency. It's bouncing around and every time it has to compress the video, it draws a little more power and the CPU throttles up to complete the task. So if we look back, the minimum power state for the CPU is 5% and its maximum is set at 100. Here is the display. We can dim it, we can turn it off. In minutes, just type in what you like. Display brightness you can adjust to your liking. Each laptop is different when it comes to screen brightness. This laptop is way too bright, so I like between 34 and 30%. Multimedia settings. When sharing media, prevent idling to sleep. If you're streaming a video or music, this will help keep your laptop from sleeping and stopping the stream. And lastly, we have battery. If your laptop hits critical, you have the options to sleep, hibernate, or shut down. Let's have it shut down. The other indicators are to give you visual warnings on your desktop. Low battery action, again you can select it if you want it to shut down sleep or ignore the fact that your battery is almost out of charge. 
That's it for the advanced power settings. The last option back on the power option is a general selection for screen brightness. Well, that wraps it up. Hope you enjoyed our demo on laptop power settings. Have a good day.